We're back live, and apologies for the brief uh, drop. We were sorting some technical issues out behind the scenes. They should be, in theory, sorted now. Uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of incidents that occurred uh, a little while ago. Of course, uh, Christopher Seftel had an issue in the LMP2 machine for the number 86 car. This was coming around in towards, uh, of course, that was the incident that we already saw with that little minor spin. Robert Lancaster then had this incident uh, with the Scours SS Racing LMP2. They both spun around and went uh, tag in the wall. And then, Austin, around the same time when this was happening, you were mentioning Selena Ward having a big problem for the Trinity Face Racing crew. Yeah, coming out of the last corner, she uh, got sideways and ended up having to stop. I believe, yeah, this might be it. Coming down into the final corner, turn 17. She had actually caught all the way up to the back bumper, bumper of our race leader. And coming out of turn 17, slid that thing super far sideways. Didn't ha quite have to come to a stop. Was able to save it. Take a ride on a board. Good well, we'll chunk of ground that she worked really, really, really hard to make up. Here with this, because this is going to get a bit wild here. Watch the wheel work to keep this car pointed in the right direction. Good heads up awareness there. She got on the brakes and the gas at the same time. I gotta imagine crank that thing hard left and just lock that thing down. Uh, that was a... Uh, a pro move there from Selena Ward holding on to that because that should have been a lot worse. Instead, Coulda, she's only lost two seconds of the race lead. I'm telling you, that it didn't. car should have been gone. So Selena Ward maintains her strong run where she's at. Oh, and into the wall goes the GT Pro race leader, Bruno Carrera, scraping the wall at the exit of the Sunset Bend. And that's Lane Fisher Motorsports get a huge run down the pit straight. Yeah, Fisher Motorsports closing in on that battle for third place again in the GT Pro category. We're not quite sure how the strategies are going to turn out, whether the battle for first currently will actually be the battle for first or whether the battle for third will end up being the battle for first. So this battle uh, right here for currently the race lead, obviously very important, but it's 50-50 shot that it's uh, actually the, uh, the real one we're looking at or the real race lead that we're looking at. But for now, Carrera holding on to it over Seoul. Looking at the inside of the GT Am. Competitor able to get it, able to get some separation over uh, Seoul and build out over a second gap just over the course of a couple corners. It's crazy what a little bit of lap traffic can do for you. Can do it, can, it's a double edged sword though. It can help you out so, so much and it can take it absolutely away can. It can a take a, a huge chunk away from you, but they're, they're able to, for the most part, battle back. So you've got the LMP2 category, which is a category that has uh, not seen a lot of action in the last uh, two, three, four hours or so. It's been very tame so far in LMP2, uh, ever since Go and Racing bowed out, which I think says a thing or two. Uh, GTM as well has kind of uh, settled down a bit, right? I mean, we haven't seen a whole lot in the way of battling. Right now, the closest two cars in GTM are Tyler Tucker for Trading Paints Racing and Carl Felber here for Full Send Racing in the battle for fifth and sixth. Otherwise, it, this is about as run of a mill of a race as you can get, right? Nobody is within a second of each other. Everyone is running their own race. This is uh, pretty much what we were seeing the first four hours of this race turn into until you hopped into the loop, Austin. Oh, look at that! Rain! We have rain on the racetrack, on the camera that just there. The first drops of rain have started to fall. Could get exciting here in a little bit. It could get a little nervy for a you few of these You can tell. Guys. It's coming down now. This is where I'm really interested to see with these. Oh, man, look at it. That's awesome. With these kind of vehicles, how long can they stay on the slicks? Will this even get heavy enough? It's it's a relatively quick band coming through, and it's not super heavy. So are we going to see people going on different tires, or is it going to stay relatively straightforward? Are we going to stay on the slicks and just have to deal with a little bit of grip loss? I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna get to find out over the course of the next co uh, couple laps. Looking at the radar, it doesn't look like the rain is actually here right now. So 
Well, just radar or not, we got drops falling on the racetrack, but so far, nobody's making any moves to come down to pit road. Everyone's staying out on the racetrack. That is, again, to be expected. It's not even heavy enough that the windshield wipers have activated yet, but there definitely is rain starting to patter down, and it's just light showers for now. And we'll see if this will worsen or improve as time moves along. Checking in on the fight for fifth between Training Paints Racing and Full Send Racing. Eight tenths of a second separate the 119 from the 94. Thing is, too, we're seeing it rain on certain parts of the racetrack, and then the camera changed to a different battle, and it not be raining on the front straightaway or, or, or down into turn three, right? So we're going to see certain parts of the racetrack lose grip a little bit earlier than other uh, other sections. Looking at, at, at a little bit of the track map, I think we're, we're really going to see the, the second sector of the racetrack get wet first. So the, the, the middle section, a lot of the twisty turns, uh, get down to the, uh, the nitty gritty of the racetrack instead of the more straightforward stuff in sector one and three, where you got a couple more straightaways. I think we're going to see the uh, the tougher section of the racetrack get drenched. It's first. coming down pretty so heavily as well, down two, to the Oldman straight uh, as well, and now racing. on the pit straight too. So it is starting to spread out uh, across the racetrack. So the time is grad is continuing to you know march on and move itself further and further forward. So full send and training paints. They are the only battle within a second right now in the racetrack. We'll keep our eyes and use them as a reference point. We got a lot of the LMP2 traffic though into pit road. Uh, right now, Scours S Racing just came in for a pit stop. And can you tell if they're on fresh tires right now or uh, on wet tires, sorry, or are they still on slicks? I will try to take a look. It's just, it's it gotta looks be way like those too early light, to put on uh, wet. Yeah, right? those look like slick tires to me. So I think slick tires are on for scours. Yeah, they're slick. <laughs> they are slick tires, the tires. But that's also a problem because what I was talking about earlier with the, uh, the strategies, if they're having to come down pit road and put down or put on slicks right now, what about, what if this rain gets a little bit too heavy or it lasts too long and in 10 laps he's got to pit again? All of a sudden, if there's a couple LMP2s that uh, have stayed out and didn't have to pit yet because they've saved gas a little bit longer, they're going to be on the front foot um, and not have to, to take an extra pit stop. Now, for, for the 48, they're 11 laps down. Uh, sorry, six laps down to the LMP2 leader, so I suppose it's not necessarily the biggest issue, but... Whoa, look out! Holy cow, a huge lockup there risk. for VRG it, it Sport. They caught a rapid. patch of standing Ooh. water, I think, and nearly slammed into the back of the Trading Paints racing car. Yeah, I was yep. that's the rain. Look, we're starting to get the trails behind the tires, too. They're starting to pick up in certain parts Take of the racetrack. Take a look racetrack. back so on what happened that here. That this is entering turn down. number three. Look at this. Holy cow. Talk about getting caught out by the Ferrari. Our race leader. Our race leader coming down pit. Might be a fuel run as well. They last pitted on lap four. We'll see. I don't well, then they know, be at risk actually, too if they because put on uh, different so companies use are different the, uh, uh, tires for all that sort of thing. It should tell you in the session, I believe. Yeah, I, I maybe. Don't quote me. I think that's a solid maybe on that one. Entries? Well, I'm not seeing them change the tires either, so it I looks like those, they're still going to be... Anywhere. Running slick tires out there. No one coming from Wets yet. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing any tread at least. And it's definitely coming down now. Well, it's a nervy moment for these guys because this is what I was talking about. It's it's a danger for all of them because they've come down pit road if they do not put on wets. Now putting on wets would probably hurt you in lap time. Uh, currently. Now, you'd be hoping that it's going to come down a little bit harder a little bit later. Uh, but you just, you really never know. And so at this point, you got to think these guys are in a little bit of danger. 
and our race leader did not get out of pit road well whatsoever. Martin Kofoy was was really, really slow. Selena Ward was able to challenge him down into turn three, but was not able to get the move done. I should say former race leaders, Martinez. I have to is, think uh, that Kofoy was pit being strategy a to bit assume the race leader the out of the pits because it, it's a difficult pit exit, right? We've seen a lot. We've seen a few cars spinning on pit exit already, so he wants to make sure he doesn't follow suit. It's wet, man. I think we're going to start really? seeing some problems here really soon because I'm looking at the radar. This is the lightest it's going to be. Now, it's not going to get super heavy. It's not going to get super heavy, but this is the lightest it's going to be. So, um... <sighs> I'm a little worried. Well, the battle uh, for second is on between Tri-State Race and the VRG Sport. You've also got the battle for second between Kofoid and Selena Ward in your GTP field. And the GTPs are the ones that are really going to struggle a lot in this rain because a lot of that mechanical grip they rely on is going to be gone once this track slicks off. So they're really going to have to tiptoe around like they're on ice. so cool seeing the, the yeah. trail come and go. Is that, like seeing how they don't have the tire trails right now. There's, there's a little down, bit on the open the straight where I don't the think back. it's raining yet. Like right in the middle of the back more, stretch, I don't think it's raining now. yet over there. So, yeah, it's it's almost perfectly dry on the back stretch still. Yeah. It hasn't you got the battle for second. Banfield trying to get around Vaughn. This is going to be a long way around Sunset Bend. That's risky when you're on slick tires on a greasy track. But he's going to make it stick. Alex Banfield up to second. Wow. Wow. It makes it more risky, like you said, but it probably makes it more possible. You got to think the guy on the inside might be a little bit more nervy, and he's taking advantage of that around the outside, around the last corner. Heck of a move Whoa, and to take that position. Yep, I, uh, well, Kofoy just went off the track, and I think we may have just seen our first victim fall to a wet track. Well, he just locks up and goes in deep, so not a twitch, but just an overshooting of the breaking point. you got to start backing these corners up a little bit more now that this track's getting damper. Yeah, that's still a big problem with the wet track. I mean, if you break at the same point, you're expecting your tires to, to grip the exact same as in the dry. And I mean, we're seeing it into, I mean, I mean, on 80% of the racetrack, we're seeing tire spray. And now in certain parts of the racetrack, I'm starting to see a decent bit of spray out of the middle portion of the race car. I guess where the diffusers hitting the ground. I'm starting to see some spray from some of the GTPs in certain parts of the racetrack. You saw it just a little bit there through that section from the LMP2. So it's getting wetter and wetter in a lot of portions of this track. I don't think we're close to that changeover point of the tires yet, and I don't know if we're going to get there. The rain's going to last a good long while, but it's not going to get much heavier than this at all. Uh, but it's going to be here for a, for a long haul. So if these cars do not push the water out of the racing groove and give themselves a relatively well, we'll see what Sefdel does we'll here because Sefdel is right currently into drive. the pits uh, for service, and he's up on the jacks. And I'm, well, I'm not seeing anything just yet. He is going to go for a driver change. So Seftel hops out of the car, and they are going to be uh, putting Luca Harmony into the car. And I believe they have changed to wet tires. Oh, nope, uh, never mind. I am mistaken. I still see the uh, blue, the blue rims on there. I didn't see them initially. They rotated them a little bit from when we had seen the car blink out so uh, nope those are still slick so who knows so first lap out of the pits Selena Ward did a lap that was two seconds worse than um, her normal lap time so that's about the level of grip that we're losing currently about two seconds of lap time in the gtp so not uh, not uh, honestly a whole lot it's got to be a lot bigger than that for for you to pull out the wet weather tire because that's just a lot of uh you know with the with the tread that you put on that tire that's a lot of traction you're taking away instantly so it's got to be really wet to to make it worth it and we're just not really quite at that point i'm going to keep track of selena ward's lap times to see if they continue to dwindle 
Tandy Fonte will point, hop into the world of sim racing GTP. Any, uh, so the Cadillac will once again get a new driver in for uh, the as we enter the final few hours of this race. You got to watch these curves, especially in this section right around Gambadian and Le Mans, because they will catch and spin you around, especially if they're slick the way they are right now. You see those rooster tails lifting up behind, courtesy of the diffuser on some of these cars as well. Started to play a factor. Now, what happens if we get a safety car? And these cars are no longer moving around at a speed that's fast enough to push that water out of the racing group. That's a good question. I feel like this, oh, this track would get pretty daggum wet, man. I mean, I'm looking at the radar right now, and from when we first saw the rain on the radar to when it finally got to us, it took 30 minutes. And I see rain all the way Whoa. to the uh, the east of this radar, and it's going east to west. So I'm willing to bet we're seeing Oh, three, three wide in contact as Coboy gonna, gets into it with training pains. Selena Ward getting into a big time at the 27A. Morton Kofoid having to scramble. Selena Ward hanging on just for the time being while the Norwegian maintains the race lead, but only by a heartbeat. And there's nowhere for him to go. A lot of traffic having to slice and dice his way around. You got to think they're holding their breath every time they press the brake pedal. I mean, I would be scared to death thinking that the back end is just going to step out. The front tires are going to lock up because you hit a, a little patch of water that you didn't see coming up to the braking zone. I mean, this has got to be nerve wracking as hell, especially for the GTPs. I think it's got to be bad for everybody, but the GTPs, man. Pretty much every I car now kicking so up that nervous, spray behind that you. You see even, even more, a couple of puddles starting to form off of the racing line, which is obviously never a good sign. That's usually when it's a good mark to try to maybe think about coming down for uh for wet tires, but still everybody, just about, just about everybody running on slick side field for the time being as we lunge to the inside of turn one. It is the question of how long is this going to take as Kofoy goes off the track just a little bit. We check back in on the GT and battle for seconds. Screeching Moves Motorsports and Digital Chicane still running second and third. And you can even see on board with uh, the Digital Chicane car because of how close he is in proximity, look at that rain light started to flash on the back of the Street Moves Motorsports car, and they both twitched through turn four. What a sight to see, man. This is absolutely awesome, seeing these guys having to adapt to, to the change in track conditions every single time. You saw uh, Oravex that time coming out of the corner, having to slide that thing and just hang on to it, wait to get on the gas pedal to accelerate. And just be a little careful with it. I love seeing them having to uh, kind of tiptoe the line of performance, getting everything out of it, and making sure you don't bend the thing, man. And that's what the rain brings you, and we're seeing it right now. Just little, little mistakes from everybody on the racetrack right now. Oh. Even Kofoy made one just a couple moments ago. Once again, losing a little bit of time to Selena Ward, letting her get back up into the fray as we got a side-by-side -side battle. I am Orbex. so proud that you finally said that. Get past little argy there on the <laughs> Apex, but able to get the move done. Maybe not with me, as uh, there was the look again to the inside. I've said it a couple as, times, just maybe not, yeah, uh, maybe not with you. Bit of a bit of door-to-door -door contact that put the 80 car back up and into second. Oh, yeah, that's Audrey Baji. So if I've ever seen Kane it. now runs 1-2. It's a great day for them. Uh, trouble in GT Pro, Thomas D'Ambrosio has crashed. Patrick Doerr has crashed. Try to track where they are on the racetrack. That's the Audi that's off. And the D'Ambrosio potentially off at the oh. same corner. We'll take a look back and see what happened. This is both approach of the hairpin. I'm surprised we haven't seen more incidents. Uh, I'm surprised we haven't uh, seen more in the rain. But we're seeing the first in the braking yeah. zone, right? Oh, maybe not the braking zone. It looked a little sketchy. Oh, a little checkup on the apex. A little bit of contact. No, that's, that's just a racing mistake. Not really Not really a rain mistake. I'm just surprised that well, we're not seeing more traction Well, you did mention that these cars errors. have been yeah, trying. They, they've been errors. backing their times off two, three seconds plus. I think that says we're getting traction problems. <laughs> oh, well, I, I think that tells you we're having traction problems well, is it five now. five seconds now? <laughs> is it, uh, Kofoid ran a 151 last time around. They were running 146s. Yeah, fair. They were running 146s in the dry. He's running 151s. So we're starting to see everybody out on the racetrack struggle big time. Still don't think we're at the wet tire change point yet, but 
We're getting close, and that's where, again, I'm worried for the people who have already pitted. This could be a big break for a lot of the guys that are still staying out on the racetrack. Stockton, Vaughn, uh, up in 1-2 in the LMP2 class. It wouldn't really benefit anybody in GTP because everybody's came down pit road. GT Pro, it would benefit the 992 and the 84 of Seoul. GTM, it would benefit Kraski. So this rain coming down right now, as heavy as it is, and as I'm looking at the radar, still forecasted for at least another 30 minutes. I got to think that... Uh, all these teams are Profoid super, has got to win a war right up to gearbox to, to boot, so we've got moment. more drivers that are struggling in these ever-changing conditions, and War trying to see if she can set up a pass to get around Kofoid as they work their way around the racetrack. Holy cow, as Selena Ward's opened up the door. Here we go. Battle world. for the lead. Ward gunning for it, trying to knock down Stop and Go Racing, who's been in complete control of this race. And Ward not able to get there. They bang doors. And Kofoy gets the nose in front. It was impressive enough that she even built the run. I don't know where she got that run. That was absolutely mental through the last corner. And I think we're seeing that outside line is starting to become maybe a little bit more of the preferred groove through that corner. It's where less rubber's laid down, so maybe we're finding a little bit more grip there uh, with the wet now, or, or with the rain now down on the racetrack, making it wet. Uh, so maybe that outside groove starting to become a little bit better through the last corner. And we're seeing a lot, oh, a little bit of contact between the front two and the GTP class. Slater so we have got confirmation Go that the five and the 66 car the are both on wet tires right now. So there are cars that are switching over to the wet. It's just a very subtle change. We have to really watch for the tread. So I have to imagine that quite a few cars here are going to be switching over to the wets when they make their next trips down in the pit road. That might be what's kept these times from falling off further. Right now, Kofoid and Selena Ward, those are the two drivers to watch in a big overall battle for the overall race lead. Yeah, a heck of a battle here in the wet. As soon as the rain came down, these two have started switching the lead back and forth and at least challenging each other. It just seems like every handful of corners, we, we see another challenge. Like we, we get one challenge, it, it falls to the wayside or they make the pass and then whoever's in second takes a couple corners, takes about a lap, lap and a half, and they're all of a sudden right back on the back bumper of the driver in front. And that's what we're seeing. Selena Ward all over the back bumper of Kofoid once again. This time Kofoid on the outside due to the lap cars. Selena Ward having to take that inside groove. Get stuck right behind Kofoid, not able to build that big run we saw last time around that corner. Kofoid going to continue for, uh, on as steady, uh, steady as he goes. Ward running in the number two spot just behind as this pack continues to slice and dice amongst each other. And I think for the most part, we're seeing people started to gradually break apart. Oh, you saw a bit of a tank slapper there for Kofoy coming out of uh, turn full, uh, five there. So works through Big Ben and down to the hairpin. Yeah, oh my goodness, and Selena Ward jamming on the brakes too. I have to match these guys are running on wet tires right now. Like, there's no way with all this spray, they are still running on slicks. They had to have come in for wets on their last pit stop. There's no way. I don't know, man. I don't. Oh boy! I just feel like if they were on wets, they would have been. But more look at how much spray they're throwing up. If was that much spray they throw up on slicks, they'd be sliding all over the place. I feel like they're. It'd be interesting to know. I wish, I wish we had the uh, the insight, but I don't know. I, I we just. <laughs> I wish I had more experience with this, but it is brand freaking new. We're, we're a little new to it, so uh, it's a little tough, but I, I just, it's not coming down heavy. It's just that it's been coming down for a long time now. Well, so Kofoy continues. I don't know if they're on wets. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, that might be a maybe good I, idea. We know the 5 and the 66 for sure are on wet tires, so check for one of those. That might be a, a good place to start. That much was confirmed by race control. Yeah, cars five and, th and the 66. Set the five and the 66.
Christian Sherrard for Tri-State Racing is making his way uh, into the pits. Along with the 84 Fisher Motorsports machine just behind. Get the car switch off momentarily as uh, pit stop commences. Getting a new driver into the car, and uh, a couple of incidents on the racetrack. The Vulture Motorsports car has been spun around. Jeff uh, Carolo has gone around. Alan Cahale has just gone off the racetrack. So one of the GTM runners is out. Uh, Selena Ward and Patrick Boylan have both had problems. So here we go. So first off, Boylan, we're going to go with this in chronological order. Boylan going off the track at the off in the SS Racing. Ironic, that was at an SS that he went off at. Selena Ward then went off the track, chasing down Kofoid. That was at, also at the hairpin. Jeff Carollo had a spin on the racetrack for the Vulture Motorsports Ferrari, and you saw him twitch right there as soon as he hit the brakes. And then just loses the back end. This didn't even get on the power all that hard. And then Alan Cahale with a couple of incidents. The first of which just gets way crossed up over the hill. And will rejoin the racetrack. Before immediately going off at the exit of the tower turn again, I fear. Yikes. And uh, in fact, another GTM car just had another off. This is the MMTQ car. Again, going off at the hairpin. A lot of mistakes quickly starting to mount late in the race. I was, I was about to ask, what, what have you found? I apologize. I'm still trying to do my investigative journalism here, figuring out if... <laughs> who's, who's on the... I'm looking, checking the pit stop currently. Uh, they are not. That is confirmed. I think our GTP not, leaders uh, are on... on uh, they they are on wet tires. Like... Uh, most of the drivers are on wet tires now. That has been confirmed uh, by Kyle world? Burney from the race control booth. Okay. Well, the LMP2 tires, you can tell whenever they're, they have tread on them. The GTP, you cannot. <laughs> I'm looking at Selena Wards right now whenever they put the tire down, and there is no tread on that thing whatsoever. Uh, but I was looking at an LMP2 before that, and you could you could tell. So the more you know. Yeah, it's weird. They need to, uh, <laughs> need to, to fix the tires on it, man. I got to be able to tell. How am I supposed to broadcast if I can't tell who, who's on what tire? Both digital chicane cars are in the pits. So Kaprowski and Orovich, uh, both coming in on the same lap. Kaprowski is already off and away. Orovich lingering in the box for a good little while still. It's been a good day for digital chicane, right? Running 1-2. Both cars have been within the top 10 all day long. Within the top 5 for a good chunk of this race, and now running 1-2 on the racetrack. I mean, it couldn't go much better for them. No, not at all. I mean, what, what more could you ask for, being up in the front of the field? Give yourself a, uh, a shot at this thing coming down to the, uh, the the wire. I know we still got a good ways left in this thing, about eight and a half hours in, three hours and 40 minutes remaining, but giving yourself that opportunity, knowing that, oh, as we see a car mowing the grass in the back, Typically, it's dangerous to do that whenever the um, it, it's raining. You typically don't want your lawnmower to be struck by lightning, so I would uh, advise us getting off the grass, but unfortunate there for the 69, getting off. Looking at the 29, doing a little lazy spin. You got to see a lot wow. more of those. With yeah, the, just uh, never got turned the back for the corner. On the track. Went straight on into the wall. Oh, you think? That's, I, I don't know if it was. I think that may have been rain-induced. That's hardware. That thing went straight, straight. That's right, though. Well, it's right on board. Uh, that, that looked weird to me. That looked weirdly no, straight. No, I mean, that wheel's turning. Well, I mean, 
you can tell it's trying to turn though. That's like, not turning. Not, he would turn It's right not just not going grass. straight. Whoa! Well, it's a bit. That's the, Parsons. No, that was the force and feedback. And Fonte from both the going around and backing up the... right into the circuit. That's some of that wet weather being caught out into the slower corners, and they're both going to get back onto the racetrack, no problem. And we're just going to keep seeing that. I'm still looking at the radar, and it's it's still not looking any better. There's moments where it breaks up a little bit further back, but the way that the weather's moving, it looks like we're still looking at 30-plus minutes until we're uh, out of this thing. So we're going to see this continue to get worse and worse. As now the question is, will the sun have set the by now? <laughs> because racing like this in the dark is going to be something. Let's see, it is 7.13 right now. Man, when is, when is Sunset Sebring? <laughs> just on, Google it, March 23rd, Sunset Sebring. On Sea March 23rd, I'm about to do some more investigative <laughs> Or just Sunset today, quick. Sebring. <laughs> Even better. Exactly, that's exactly what I'm doing. Track has cold, cooled off big time. Before the rain started, the track temperature was at a pretty solid 36 degrees Celsius. It is down to 21. The track temperature has tanked. It is chilly right now, and that is all because of all the moisture that has soaked into the uh, soaked into the surface here. About an hour. The 25. Oh, 25 sunset minutes. Sunset is okay. at 7:39, which is 25 minutes away. Yes. And the rain with, uh, is going to continue for at least that, unless it breaks up uh, before it gets to the track. So, I Casey think. Racing just going that again for another lazy slide. It's going to be uh, the new norm going forward. You see one of the MSP Mercedes rejoining onto the racetrack. Now we really get to see, you know, who is hour. the best when it comes to the wet weather conditions. Who can uh, come out on top when everything is being thrown up into the air with this rain. And into the pits will come Morton Kofoid. Selena Ward stays out for another lap. They did, didn't they? I feel like this is really early. Didn't they just come down pit road? Unclear. It's not a drive-through. Yeah. Why is he coming out so? Up on the jack. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm a little lost. Selena Ward just had a moment, uh, but she's okay. Yeah, that's. Uh, well, I, I'm watching so them. I, I cannot sure stress how much I'm watching that race, that left rear like clock. Right to see if I can spot any tread on the underside of the tire since it's lifted up in the air. I don't see any tread going on those tires, so I don't know. It's hard to tell. I, I, I hate how hard it is to tell with these GTPs, but... Uh... They should just put it on the not... freaking scoreboard, up on the results. For a moment, there's the results. Actually a tell me what tire like everybody's on right at the moment. I don't think... Uh, no, I don't have it. Whoa! Well, right out of yeah, pit road, Kofoid spins it and goes oh, into the Kofoid fence. And will rejoin at turn four. That's not a pleasant sight. Yeah, no kidding. Well, that went from bad to worse. Holy cow, man. Unexpected pit stop that we still have no idea why he came down for. Put on new tires. Tires are no good. <laughs> get, get out on the track and just spin out immediately, not even getting through the first sector. That's a a tough break for the 278. Stop and go racing. Getting down to almost three hours to go. Now the five. Parsons again Hard off on the, the race racetrack. Race. Too hot. Having a nightmare in the wet weather. Spins around. Woo, the Audi just getting around that. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he curved now, that, that Porsche I'm not bumper. letting you live. You live so, down. Oh, Porsche, my God, that's a Mercedes. Somebody's watch gonna... this year. Watch this year. Uh, uh, somebody's <laughs> stabbing me in the head with a stake. Yeah, this oh. is unbelievable. He 
curves the back it bumper. It does not perfectly. get closer than that. Oh, baby. Nice. Applause for uh, for the Audi driver there. That was uh, Patrick Doer for GSC Racing Esports. That was a heck of an avoidance. That was awesome, man. I uh, just saved his race, right? This is the this is the mental portion of it where you, you've got to be just as smart as you are physical. You got to be just as good. Uh, as you are with the, uh, the physicality part, actually wheeling the thing around the racetrack, as you are with the mental game of, of getting through the end of this thing, just keeping it safe. So this is the part where you just gotta, you gotta lay back just a little bit, take care of your stuff, get to the end of this thing. We've seen it now multiple times. We saw somebody racing for the GTP win uh, with Kofoid in the 278. Been it just a couple of laps ago, and now they're back down. Jason pit Bernie making his way back out onto the, the racetrack with Kofoid just behind. And Kofoid, in fact, taking a drive through penalty because remember, it's a drive through for every 25x, which uh, we might be seeing a few of those now that the rain is coming to play. Check it back in. Nope. Oh, true. I thought he was coming out for next damage. Man, he that's. That's heartbreaking. It's just, it, it keeps just magnifying for the 278. It's not even done. I mean, I, I, it's just back to back to back. Three in a row, the 278 has just gotten stinkered. <laughs> Checking in on the battle you, for like, third between they were in the Adrian battle for the race lead for World of lucky Series to be on the lead lap. Benjamin Fisher for Fisher Motorsports. The 151 of the 44 is still trying to pack up nose to tail. This, uh, this GT Pro fight, I don't think he's going anywhere, and neither is this GT Am battle either between Julia Cervone and Carl Felver. Yeah, fighting hard for that fifth place position. Cervone in fifth, going down into the final corner, one lap behind the GT Am leader of Kaprowski. Holding on from Felver here, but Felver hauled on his trails. I'm surprised that they're still wrapping that inside line. I thought maybe the that outside group would find a little bit of grip after we, what we saw Selena Ward do, but everybody still seems to be committed to the inside through 17. <laughs> Careful, Felver. Saw him twitch that back end out just a little bit. Coming around through turn one. Oh, Selena well, back on the stopped. racetrack now. She oh, as, uh, back onto the racetrack. She's completely blown Jump back and point. find out what happened. This was coming through Collier and up towards Tower, I believe. I'm sorry, this is at Cunningham Corner. Whoopsie-daisy. I don't know why you would back up onto the circuit instead of just driving around. I guess. Well, I mean, it worked out for. Her. Was there is there an escape path? Oh, there I can tell you one car that's still on slick tires. I'd the sixty nine car. The GTP on the, you take on a look at the road. replay at this. Yeah, I mean, look at this here. Yeah, that's the definition right on of a board. lazy spin. My goodness. Yeah, look at that. I mean, that car. <laughs> You cannot tell me that car is not running on slick tires He's right now. Like it, it <laughs> so that makes me think we haven't seen him been struggling very this well whole time. Have. Did the track just get exponentially wetter in the last couple moments? Because now he's struggling. I so think heavy. the rain may have just picked up a little bit. Selena, we're slow again. She's missed another one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there. I, that I was uh, Screeching his Motorsports. You just saw it in the replay. The Taking out Alec Cahalli as well. In the midst of all of that, it's carnage on the racetrack as the uh, the 53 Ferrari got spun around. And then Jason Bernie, the three car for MSP, has just binned it as well. Aaron Beaver's just binned it. John Jones is off. We're going to keep on the replay string here because we're going to keep it going. There goes the, uh, the number three car spinning off the racetrack. This is John Jones spinning off the or spearing off the racetrack, going in way deep. And then Aaron Beaver. 
And they're gonna be even the final final corner yeah, here. Like the racetrack has gotten worse. I think it's very Lazy safe to spin say. again. Slides around and stops. Oh my goodness. Oh, the they are running. Sibelia is off. The World of Sim Racing BMW of their, just uh, went off. Or at least Selena Ward did, but I know that she had a, a moment. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, I love the rain. <laughs> Nobody's safe. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. This is mental, man. Red flag. We are going to turn into beer league levels of shenanigans so, if it keeps getting like this. If it keeps raining, we might be getting to that. The Audi is in pit road, and I'm still not seeing anything in the way of extra tires going onto that car. So I think everyone is trying to tiptoe as best as they can right now. There you see one of the LMP2s actually trying to unlap themselves from a GTP. Now, that LMP2 is on, is on wet tires. That GTP, I think, is on slicks. Yeah, that's what I, I feel like they have to be on slicks, man. I know we, we were debating this earlier and we kind of said that they were on wets, but what, I what agree. we've seen over I, the I, last I, I, I will laps, concede. I feel like wets should be able to handle this level of rain to at least keep you on the racetrack. I, slicks, yeah. This is a wet track now, and I think we're starting to see the slick struggle. But the thing is, it's not going to stay like this for that long. So do you pit oh, and boy. take that 50-second pit stop to put on wet tires or... Do you, do you tough it out and hope that you keep all four wheels on the racetrack and that the rain will stop relatively soon? Because I'm looking at the weather. It's going to loosen up a little bit. It's going to lighten up, uh, and then it's going to completely stop after about uh, 20, 25 minutes. So can you I mean, hang 20 on? to 25 gonna, minutes on this track, that is a, a long time to last on slick and, tires. And your race. When the rest of the field is running you down. That's, for some, for the NLP2, that's half of a fuel run. Yeah. I'm just playing the strategy in my mind. I don't know. I'm just looking at the lap times, and it scares me, man. Every time I'm looking at Selena Ward crossing the line, it's a second slower. Now, I mean, she ran a 209. Whenever they were uh, on the last few laps in the dry, they were running 145s, 146s. They were in 209s, Carl Felber man. and the Bulls Racing seconds. Machine still tucked up to the back of Julia Cervone in the training paints. Whoa, as a Porsche goes in deep. Selena Ward is in pit road, so the race leader uh, will bail to the pits. We keep eyes Selena on Ward this battle here. And right now, no exchange in the battle for the number five spot. Well, we might get it here as a big loose moment for Carl Felber will open up the door. Sorry, for Savona will open up the door for Felber, but Felber couldn't uh, capitalize in the Mercedes. For... Uh, for Selena Ward, I'm still seeing slicks on that car. I'm not. You're seeing tread? Where are you seeing tread? Front I'm left? Tread. All right, I'm I'll take tread. your word for it. Tread. I don't see any tread. tread where I'm at, but I'm also staring at tread. headlights. So. On, the, on the front left, I'm seeing <laughs> tread. I think everybody's got tread now. <laughs> Maybe. He immediately says. <laughs> Maybe. Let me let me go back to. You sound very confident. The world of sim racing. Oh, dude, they've got me so confused with this. It's new. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she was the last holdout. Texas beat sim racing. The world of sim racing team fourth and fifth in their own little battle for GT Pro. Sorry, for fourth in GT. Pro. But still a battle that is continuing on nonetheless. And that sun should be hitting the horizon any time now, too. We're going to be racing in dark before, uh, I think, before the hour's out. Yeah, I think that's a pretty uh, safe bet. We're getting on uh, pretty close to it. 
get that time where we might be getting down to the darkness. And while it's still raining, now like I mentioned, the rain's gonna be petering out here pretty soon, but we've still got a little bit of rain to come. So about another 20 minutes. Everybody's stuck on the wet tires. So looking at the front of the GTP field though, with Selena Ward having to come back down and Kofoid having to come back down. It's now completely switched up the running. Fonty and Espina, uh, God bless, I cannot say his name. Espadina uh, have had wet tires the entire time and are now gonna be able to run through this entire wet session on just the wet tires, I assume, and then be able to pit back onto the dries as soon as it goes dry. So I think that they're gonna, they're gonna strike the strategy perfectly, the 51 and the 88. Carl Felber, meanwhile, getting around Cervone for fifth place, finally. The full set Mercedes has put himself up and in, into the top five, and Trading Paints has bumped out of the top five in your GTM category. And I think the rain might be picking up again, because I've seen a lot more raindrops on the camera down at uh, along the Ullman Strait. So it stopped for a little while, but it's starting to intensify now all over again. That's coming down pretty good. Makes me worried. As soon as it started oh, yeah. doing I mean, this last right time, there. we started seeing people just going off every corner, every couple seconds. Oh, yeah. We were having another guy going off the racetrack, so I'm a little worried. It's coming down. Yeah. What is the Man, down radar right showing right about now? This is the hardest I've seen it, I think. Okay. It's a little darker right. blue so, yeah, than we're it about has to been, hit, or we're yeah. about to get into a darker blue. So we're I about to hit the proper rain up. then now. <laughs> it's just been gradual showers before. But then it, eh, I mean, but then after the, after that darker blue, it's got a little gap where we might have no rain for about two minutes. So I don't know. It's going to go back and forth, but that's what I love about this. It's ever changing. You never, you're never going to have a perfect grip on it. Just as the grip on the racetrack goes away and Aaron Beaver comes back lap after lap. And spins the mayor, this is lap that's gone away. Uh, uh, number 34 Mercedes just loses that coming around through turn one and Oh, just got nicked by one of the GTPs. And Matthew Orovich, one of the digital chicane runners, has Man. just looped it as well. Spins off into the grass, keeps it out of the wall, then gets it back onto the racetrack. Only to, uh, oh, we had the headlights taken out. Gow uh, Gowen Racing clipped the number 80 uh, digital chicane Ferrari, and those headlights have been wiped out. That's, that is horrible news. That's bad news because that sun is setting. He needs to get those fixed. That, that's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage anyway. And then like you said, the headlights on top of it, that's that ends up being massive, massive damage. It's so crazy. And this isn't like they told where you have yeah, all of right those now. stadium Everybody's lights to light the track. On. You don't have any of that at Sebring. Dark. You're relying on your headlights and nothing else. He sure did. Oh, I think he spun it out again. I think he spun it out again. Nightmare for the 80. Nightmare of a loop. lap. And you can see how hard the rain's coming down. It's the heaviest it's been. And then Aaron Beaver with this moment. Seconds later, another car. Oh, boy. Hard into the wall. And Cervone now, the trading paints Ferrari. Spin it out in Sunset guys. Bend. She'll go around and almost tag the wall. And then just as we say that, there was Beaver pulling across the racetrack. I'm curious to see if we're going to be seeing uh, Matthew Orvach come into pit road here. Because those, you need those. I don't, I'm sorry, you need those headlights. There's a reason why if for a night race, if your headlights are damaged, you get given a meatball flag. I mean, just, it just, it breaks my heart for him because it, it just, everything's going so well. He's having a great race, running up towards the front, maybe giving himself a chance to win. And in a blink of an eye, man, one lap, just a string of incidents has destroyed he's that front in. end. You saw in that second one, whenever he came to a stop, that front end was just flapping as he came to a stop. I mean, just tough, it's, tough break. It's an unpleasant to call, but down, it's a good call for him to come fixed. down to the pit road and get that fixed. You cannot race 
in the dark at a track like Sebring in the rain without your lights. Now, will Jeff Carollo from Ultra Motorsports do the same? Well, uh, probably just now, a, a second ago. When did that happen for him? Has he been damaged? Whoa. Well. Oh, no. Yep, and that was... A little sketchy under braking. Not yeah, too bad, that was his but it just never came too. back that up. That was the stop oh, and go car the way through. Him. Oh, he pulled back across. A lot of problems from a lot of contenders. As soon as the rain picked up, we started to see a lot of issues. And it's still heavy. We're in that heavy section where it's just a little bit darker than it has been. A little bit heavier. Um, uh, just kind of switching between the different things on the radar. We're going to get, like I said, a little break that's going to last a minute or two. But it's not really going to be enough. It might give us a little reprieve. And then it's going to rain again for another 20 minutes. Jacobo Ramposa was off and will take a tow to pit road. So, the driver of the number 69 GT Pro Porsche having an issue and, again, just goes off of the track. And you're not kidding, right? It is very similar. I wonder what happened. I, I'm That's starting to believe you now to the last one. when you say a hardware failure. You know, one is a, one's a fluke, two's a, a pretty big coincidence yeah. or something like that. <laughs> No, was that the same corner? I'm not sure that was a different corner. It's weird. It's the same corner too, though. Like, what? What in the world was wrong with that? I think the first one was a few corners his... after. I, I thought it was. I could have swore it was the same one, but. Little tip. Okay. Well, I could be wrong. Oh no. Seventeen. His teammate just a couple laps ago was having troubles now. Getting on the Little brakes tip. here. Off of the grass. Little loop around. Oh, yeah. That's the same corner it's just, as his teammate. There's Literally such the same innocent right. slides, right? And, and they're harmless. For the most part, they are harmless. Yeah, exactly. For, for the most part, they're harmless. Uh, you're, uh, you just have to try to make sure that you Until can't... Until you have a bad uh, rejoin. <laughs> you can't get yourself into the wall. Like, I think Aaron Beaver may have just found himself as he is, uh, I think, hit the wall coming through Sunset Bend on the inside somehow. Again, loses the back end, and ooh, he did keep it out of the wall. Good job. Oh, man. <laughs> I think he was fine. The camera doesn't. Ooh, he, you he said good job. That was a little scary back and there. back up across the racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> Considering he still has a rear end on that race car, I think you're probably right. Oh, yeah. Man, that rain is coming down now. It's it's pouring, man. We got weights the rain coming out is of the back always of these cars the greatest out equalizer. Here. It uh, sure does put on one heck of a show. And all with three hours uh, left on the docket. You can see Matthew Orvach for Digital Chicane trying to fight his way past Lyndon Swaby in the Kinetic Racing Porsche. This is for. The overall 33rd position on the track, although not for any uh, battle in an actual class position here either. The next closest car to Orovec is two seconds up the road. Didn't take it to the inside though, and how about that? Kinetic's gonna let him have it, recognize he's quicker in the wet. And now he can now he is now free to try to chase down Julius Savone for the Trade of Paints racing crew. How about the fight for third though in GTM? Pick it up. Ultra Motorsports still out with busted headlights. Yeah, I need to get in touch with whoever Ooh. changed uh, Orvex headlights. Because uh, last time I had to get a headlight changed in my car, it took two months. So the fact that he's back out here after only losing a couple, a couple laps, one lap. Plus, in racing, takes the spot away. I'm, really I'm going to go back to from, that shot. Uh, from Vulture Motorsports. So Felver up to third. Corolla will drop to fourth. Uh, I don't think so. not right now. I don't think they are. Do you think the, the lights, lights are aren't going to help you? Yeah, well, the lights aren't going to help see, you see through spray either. <laughs> it is a little early. They're, it's still pretty bright. 
Yeah, that's oh. fair. And it's still pretty bright out there. It's er, not bright, but there's still light out on the racetrack because we're still in sun sunset. A little bit of light, light peeking through the cl uh, clouds. Goodness, I can't talk. Uh, oh, oh! Still a little ways to go in this thing. We're definitely what? getting to nighttime what before. What the world? Uh, the checker sunset. I cannot stress right how we weird that was. Take Sideways, it right on board. Able here. to save it. Watch what happens here. What did they hit? What did they hit? <laughs> I Wet want grass. to know. <laughs> oh. No, not not by my count they did it. <laughs> they got that wall on the yeah, inside. Yeah, take didn't one they? more look. We need an outer view for Watch your this count. Here. What did they hit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, they didn't hit anything. They didn't hit anything. <laughs> they didn't hit anything. Pretty much. <laughs> there's a there's an invisible wall hey, on Who C3. Says I'm we found doing it. it. We're sending that into iRacing tonight. Wait, I'm not doing it. Good luck with that, Nolan. It's too funny. I I did. No. <laughs> <laughs> you've got the you've got the vod. You can download it. You're I the mean, I, I'm right. You can go Aren't back I? and check it. I don't have it. I can't do it. Taylor Parsons having a moment at the hairpin. That's a lot of work. That's a lot and of work. That, that, that car's missing its front clip. Man, he has had a so, big time struggle in the run. Uh, what is it with way? this car and losing its front bumper? Every race. I don't know. <laughs> Well, with that I happening, mean, no Kowalski's right? looking I mean, this to car has potentially been on lap the entire fire GTA all field. day long. And somehow, granted, this car has only had eight pit stops. Everyone else has had nine or ten. So whatever Kowalski's, whatever Kowalski's been doing, it's clearly working. He's doing a heck of a job out there. Digital chicane, ninety-three. That entire team. Putting on a heck of a show, trying to trying to end the reign of terror that the Screeching Moose Motorsports guys have been uh, inflicting on the GTM competition so far this year. Looking pretty good with the, the issues that Parsons has been having over the course of the last couple laps. Well, the racing action will uh, continue to uh, gradually pick on up as uh, we are. We're going to keep on keeping on over here from the. Uh, from the Seabrook International Raceway. The rain has arrived in force, and we are getting set to go racing into the dust. We're going to take a step back. You won't miss a second. You're watching us on Greenfly TV.
still under green flag conditions here in the VSA Sports Car Championship in the 12 hours of Sebring. We did have a couple of crashes while we were under that latest safety car. Jeremy Littleton and Benjamin Fisher both going around, and this happened all the way down at Cunningham Corner here, Austin. Yeah, coming down to the corner. Oh, man, the 44 just gets punted from behind into the 17. The 44's been challenging up to the front of the GT Pro Field. You see that damage in the rear bumper. That was the Fisher Motorsports that machine that, that ended up getting into him no in a quite for big him way. Him. That is uh, just unfortunate, I think, to say the very least. Yeah, right? I mean, that was, that was unusual. And we'll check he back in right. on the battle for third as well, Fisher Motorsports still holding strong with Texas Sim Speed just behind. Fisher with a half a second gap over Texas Sim Speed. Sorry, Texas Speed Sim, I should say. Oh, big error exit in the corner. Big loose moment for the 44. Maybe still uh, a little nervy from the accident earlier, giving up the position to Texas Speed Sim. That 32 moving up into the podium positions in the GT Pro category. Just a little bit of a nervy moment coming back, uh, com or coming out of the corner onto the throttle for the 44. I gotta think that Maybe that rear end damage could be causing a little bit of issue too. I mean, that's dented in pretty good. Yeah, I think we're just seeing a couple of issues where uh, guys just have a little bit too much wheel put into it whenever they start putting the throttle down and you can't have as much wheel put into it with this level of rain, this level of water on the racetrack compared to whenever it's nice and dry like we've been running in earlier. So I think we're just seeing a lot of mistakes on the apex of corners currently from a lot of guys because they've got a lot of wheel into it and they get back on the throttle and that back end just wants to step around because there's no grip between those rear tires and the, and the uh, uh, track surface. every moment we're coming down to the end of the weather period the rain's going to be subsiding here within the next 10 minutes and they're having to make a pit stop so for the 123 they've got to be hoping that everybody else in the lmp2 category that has any shot at running for a podium spot also has to come down pit road in the next five ten minutes uh, and make a pit stop and have to put on wet tires because i imagine they're going to have to put on wet tires right now the rain is coming down just as hard as it was 10 minutes ago and this track is just as wet as it has been this entire time. So uh, if they, I'm the 123, I'm going to be shaking in my boots a little bit for, for a little while, unless they just know for a fact that nobody else can really make it too far.
the window of opportunity, I believe, is, is starting to starting to close a little bit. We still got a little bit of time where this rain's going to be coming down this hard, but we're nearing the end of it, and we're going to start seeing that dry line starting to come out. And I'm really interested to see. I haven't seen a race go from uh, even this amount of wet to dry before, so I'm I'm really interested to see with this many cars out on the racetrack how fast does that dry line form and are we going to be able to have side by side battles or like in any corners for any period of time or are we going to be stuck to that dry line for 30 45 minutes and if you're not on it you're not making a pass that's why i'm excited <laughs> I knew you could get there at some point. I have faith in you. <laughs> Our... Another lazy spin though. Uh, our overall and GTP race leader down pit road currently, and this is uh, good news for Selena Ward, who had to come down and take that pit stop in the middle of her, her cycle a little bit earlier than she wanted to, to put on wet tires because of Fonty having to take this pit stop right now because the rain is stuck along or stuck around a little bit longer than we had maybe anticipated. It'll probably even out because I think that she will be able to stay out to the end of the rain and then be able to come down pit road for slicks at the same time that he'll have to come down Danny pit Fonte road for slicks. Danny Fonte getting continue well as we will slice and dice our way back through the, the running order and try to pick up the uh, back of the pack. So the World of Sim Racing Machine is going to stay in the number two position where he's at on the racetrack and checking in on some of the other fights. Right now, uh, Kyle Harkima and Thomas Marcelino, about one second separated between a lot of them. This is for second and third on the track as well. couple different battles out on the racetrack currently this is the the one to watch but we must have had something go on a little bit further back looking at the gtm the 32 going down another lazy spin just down in the dip of that corner down on the apex probably getting to the throttle to come out of the corner with a little bit of uh, a little bit too much wheel put into it and around she goes that back end just not enough grip in the rear end of these things whenever the rain's coming down and there's just no Christian traction. Christian Kemprager has also uh, biffed it. And this is at a very fast section of the racetrack in very wet conditions. And the LMP2 leader gets hooked as he spins around. Oh. What in the world? I don't think he did anything wrong there. I feel like he's down on the inside of the racetrack, and that's that's like what we saw earlier in the race. I remember that happening earlier, and I was just so confused. I don't understand why you don't just let the faster guy go. He's got the inside line. He's already past you, and you just turn down and ruin their day. I mean, I don't think that the LMP2 leader's, leader's day is ruined or anything because he had such a big gap, but I don't know. It's just such a silly error to make. It's a silly error, but I mean, it is an error nonetheless. And uh, it, I think it is something that we could see um, play a potential factor in how these races continue to manifest themselves further on down the line. So we don't know um, how this race will function, but I can tell you right now, Comprego will not be terribly happy with that. The good silver lining for that car, he has a boatload of time. Back to Marcelino running in the number two spot. Yeah, he's built himself a very, very favorable gap. And I know we've seen an LMP2 or, uh, or an LMP2 or two. That's so weird to say, but that is correct. Uh, have come down pit road and um, it kind of throws the strategy for a loop because if Campringer 
has to come down pit road, then he doesn't really have that big of a lead. Uh, if he has to come down pit road before the weather stops, I should say, then that lead's not really that big. It's a little superficial, so we're just going to have to wait and see when the rain stops to really be able to get a good idea of how big these gaps are between a couple of these guys and whether we have any real races for the win. Race in action continues on from the uh, 12 hours of Sebring. We're going to ride on board with a couple of these drivers, and you know what? We haven't uh, given some love to the GT traffic in a while. Let's go with Ryan Kaprowski of the Digital Chicane number one as we continue on steadfast into the night. A huge bobble out of Sunset Bend there for uh, Ryan Kaprowski as he continues on. We've had a few incidents while we were uh, riding on board and diagnosing some issues behind the scenes. First off, Tyler Thomas 
going around again for just another one of those lazy little slides that we are all too familiar with uh, at this point on the racetrack. And then uh, Jason Burney having this moment, and Thomas Mora and Danny Fonte had similar problems, all of these in GTP Austin. Yeah, going around turn one here, the MSP3 on the outside. I think he tried cutting it back in behind just to try to file in. And again, a little bit too much wheel. I think that's what we're seeing with a lot of these spins. A lot of them are on the apex of a lot of these corners, and that's where you got a lot of the wheel put into it right sure whenever you're was. coming off of it. Oh, a little bit of contact. Oh, back across the racetrack. Is that the second place GTP car? Check back in on Kofoid. Who uh, collided? He got turned again by that same BMW that served a couple of prototypes in that corner now. And then Aaron Beaver is already off the road and uh, having a bit of a bad day. And that car is already wounded, keep in mind, from that past incident. So approach at the same corner, high speed. And back end's just going to get away from him. Goes for a very long slide out. Talk about a close one. Yeah, we've had a lot of close ones here over the course of the last hour. The uh, the rain have, has given us a, a good bit of entertainment ever since it started falling on us, and it's about to it's about to to end its uh, end its graces. Unfortunately, we're gonna run the last two and a half hours or so of this in the dry it seems so we're uh getting down to the end of this thing we're about to form that dry line like i was talking about earlier and we're going to see who is the best with the changing conditions who can capitalize yeah, who's gonna push too who's hard gonna who's going to push a little bit too end hard, up too uh tracking things around it is it is a tough run right to see how uh how everything is going to pan on out, and I have no idea at this point how all this racing action is going to develop. Right now, a lot of these folks have got to, uh, I, I think, try to address things as quickly as they possibly can. They've got to really work on diagnosing whatever issues they've got going down on the racetrack and really working to try and uh, scrap it out for whatever spots they can muster. Otherwise, this race is going to continue to get even more messy. That rain is still coming down by you. It hasn't gone away. Yeah, we're just on the edge of the band. I'm looking at the radar. We've got maybe, here, let me zoom in on it a little bit. Yeah, maybe five to 10 more minutes, 10 maximum, I've got to say. I don't think we see more than 10 more minutes of rain and looking at my weather radar or the, the forecast for the rest of the day. After this one passes completely by, we will be at 0% for the rest of the, the evening. So we'll be running this thing to the dry to the end. But we still got another 10 minutes or so in the rain, and then we'll we'll get to see those changing conditions like we were talking about, and uh, get to see again who can who can find the the most speed in that. And Jeff Carollo having a couple of incidents as he has spun his Vulture Motorsports Ferrari around, and the 016 just gonna go for that lazy little slide that we are so used to seeing. And John Jones going off the racetrack as well in GTM. He is with the Screeching Moose Motorsports car. Contact coming to the Omen straight and spins him off and oh, just barely keeps it out of the concrete. So we are still trying to battle with some audio issues behind the scenes as uh, we uh, have lost Austin Edstrom for just a brief moment. We'll keep on keeping on, though. Uh, the battle for fourth is picking up Andrew Subiela and Daniel McConnell run fourth and fifth on the racetrack as it stands as they work their way uh, up and around the race course towards... Uh, uh, towards the hairpin now and hard on the brakes as McConnell trying to see if he can fight 
the outside line. Can't get there, and he's going to give up time to one of the GGB Cadillacs. I think that's the world of Sim Racing. That is the world of Sim Racing Cadillac. That's going to get through uh, on the inside as well. So less than three hours to go. And the race is so far picking up in true earnest here. Uh, the Firestorm Motorsports Ferrari has gone off, but otherwise we are looking more or less steady on the racetrack. Yeah, everybody's mostly line astern. I think most people are, are knowing the rain's about to end and they're probably minding their P's and Q's just trying to get to the end of it and get back to a more normal style of racing that they're used to and uh, they're probably excited at this point to get back to the dry. I think most people out here are, are struggling pretty heavily. Uh, maybe a handful of guys are upset to see it go, but most of, most of everybody out here has been struggling since about the halfway point in the rain shower. It just seemed like the track took a huge change around that point and nobody could hang on to their race car. Um, but ever since then, everybody's kind of started to figure it out and hang on to it a little bit better and I think the uh, next couple laps, like I said, I, I know I've beat a, beaten a dead horse with it at this point, but whenever that dry line starts forming, how quickly can you put on those slick tires? And then if you do put on those slick tires, if you get outside of that dry line, how detrimental will it be to you? So looking forward to, to catching that here in a couple laps. Watching Jones in the 29 and the GTM coming around the final corner, going down to pit road. Unfortunate for him. Now he's he's eight laps down, so maybe not fighting too hard with too many people, but uh, does give up a little bit of time having to come down at this time with the rain about to stop. Unless he's coming down to put on slicks. Maybe he put us on slicks right now, but that's going to be too early. He's going to be slipping and sliding for laps. Uh, it's going to be pretty, very bad out there for him. So I imagine he's coming down putting on another set of wet tires, but that's still going to be unfortunate for him because... He'll have to come back down pit road and I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. It costed himself another 50 it's seconds. It cost him another 50 seconds pits. or so. Uh, currently, as it stands, you've got uh, Daniel McConnell and Adrian Subiela uh, running fourth and fifth as one of the closer battles on the racetracks. This is for GT Pro uh, with McConnell for Texas Speed Sim Racing trying to hang on against World of Sim Racing just behind. And holy cow, a little bit of a look to the inside for the Vision Motorsports uh, driver nearly running over the Texas Speed BMW. And the windshield wiper still going like crazy with under three hours left to go. We are into the final quarter of this of this 12-hour uh, endurance race. And we are pretty much under full cover of darkness. And I think by now the rain looks like it has stopped. So now we're pretty much just waiting for the track to dry. Well, yeah, it's still raining. It's still raining in some sections of the racetrack, but it's it's about to come to a close. We're, we're just about out of the the weather portion of the race. We're about done, and everything will go back to relatively normal here pretty soon. But again, paying attention to a little bit of strategies. Does anybody else have to come down pit road while the track's still wet and put on wet tires again and uh, cost themselves 50 seconds? Or will everybody be able to stretch it out and uh, put on dry tires whenever that dry line finally forms? So, at this point in time, where do you go, right? I mean, wh when do you think about coming in for slick tires? You got a lot of the track that is starting to dry off a little bit more, but you got a good chunk of it, right, that is still very much wet. The times are starting to grow a little bit faster, but not nearly enough, I think, to consider coming in for dry tires right now. I'm thinking maybe within the next 20 minutes or so, you reassess and see where it looks, or maybe even just when you run the tanks dry. I think I pay attention to the tire tracks. When when does the, the water stop coming up off the racetrack from the car? I feel like that's probably whenever I begin to, to think about it. Unless I start feeling a ton of grip before then, then I'll come down, but... If I don't start feeling a massive change of grip before then, then 
I'll wait until I start seeing other people's tire tracks going away. If, and that's always the biggest question is how do you manage to keep that grip in check without it uh, trying to fall away? It, it's always going to be one of the most difficult challenges is figuring out at what point do you come in for uh, for dry tires. You can't even really use the track as a good indicator, right? Because we are now racing in the night, so you don't have a lot of the visual cues on the racetrack that these guys are used to having. But it is worth noting that a lot of the incidents when drivers spinning off and having lazy spins, they have really lessened in strength, which does tell you this track is getting easier and more stable to race on. Yeah, and I feel like the sprays are getting less and less strong. I mean, they're still there. You can still easily see them. But I feel like they're not quite as heavy as, as we've been seeing. I need to wait until we get to the back straightaway to really see it uh, uh, for real and get a good good judge on it. Maybe it's just because we've been going through some slower speed sections. But it just felt like it was quite a possibly. little bit so tamer coming out of the back to, of these uh, things. What we'll continue racing on, we got two hours and 38 minutes left to go. Uh, no on-track battles for position within any classes right now. Um, I will give a heads up. We are going to try one more attempt here uh, to see if we can fix uh, these audio issues that we have been having behind the scenes. Uh, we are going to lose the stream feed for a brief moment. Uh, do not, don't fret though. We will be uh, getting back up in action. Uh, before too long so just bear with us give us maybe uh, two to five minutes we'll catch you up and on everything that you may have missed up to that point we'll be back in a moment you're with us on green flight tv